Good morning, everybody. It's Miss Anna. I sure miss all of you. It's it's crazy, all this stuff that's going on in the world, but I sure miss being with you guys on Sunday mornings and playing games and singing songs and teaching y'all about Jesus, but I know we'll be back together soon, and I hope you're enjoying being off from school. I know you still have to do some schoolwork, but at least you don't have to go to school. Um, hope everyone had a good spring break. You can drop an emoji for how your spring break is going. Put a heart, a laughing face, a, you know, smiley, a sad face if it's not going well. <laughs> Anyways, today, um, well, actually, who knows what tomorrow is? What's tomorrow? I know all of you know because you probably have Easter baskets sitting around. It's Easter. That's right. Tomorrow is Easter. So what do some people think Easter is about? Maybe some people think it's about candy or maybe Easter egg hunts or maybe dying eggs or the Easter bunny. But what do we know the reason for Easter really is? It's for Jesus, for Jesus dying on the cross and then he rose again in three days, right? So if you said it's the day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, you are right. Jesus died on the cross for your sins and mine and that is what we're going to talk about today story of Jesus's resurrection. So I brought some eggs with me today. You guys may have seen them before. They are called resurrection eggs. I'm going to pull them out one by one as I tell you uh, bits and pieces of the story of the resurrection. So I'm going to see. Let me sit them right there. Okay, so I have my first egg here. I'm going to read bits and pieces from my story. Um, in Jesus's day, most people walked everywhere. Maybe kind of like in New York where people walk everywhere. Sometimes kings rode on donkeys or horses when they entered a city. The people would stop what they were doing and watch as the king rode by. On the day that Jesus rode into their city, the people were thrilled to see him. They believed that he was their new king who had come to save them and to fill their lives with joy. The people showed their happiness by spreading tree branches and coats on the road. This was also their way of showing honor to Jesus. So what do you think is in my blue egg? Any ideas? Post in the comments if you know what it is. Okay, I'm gonna open it. Ready? One, two, three. Let's see, it's a donkey. Look at that little donkey. It's the donkey that Jesus rode on. Okay, so number two. Let's get number two out. We'll sit the donkey. I don't know if you'll be able to see him. No, you won't be able to see him. Anyways, I'll show you one more time. That's a little donkey. See? Okay, number two. We have a pink egg. Not everyone was happy to have Jesus as his king. Who wouldn't be happy to have Jesus as their king? Because I sure am happy. Some people only pretended to be happy, but on the inside, they really didn't want anything to do with him. Who knows who one of the pretenders was? Any ideas from the story of Jesus and the resurrection? How about Judas? Judas. Some other men hated Jesus so much that they wanted to kill him, but they needed the help of someone who could get close to Jesus like one of his disciples. Judas was greedy for money. He told the men that he would help them capture Jesus if they would pay him 30 silver coins. So what do you think is in my pink egg? Any ideas? Let's see. I'm not sure you'll be able to see this that well. Let's see. These are silver coins. Like the coins that, that Judas used to betray Jesus. All right, so we got a donkey, and we got silver coins. All right, let's get our third egg out. So, Jesus gave everyone a drink at the Last Supper. Then he says something that was hard for them to understand, and maybe hard for you to understand. He said that the wine in the cup was his blood, and he didn't mean they would actually be drinking blood, right? No. But the wine was a symbol or a picture of his blood. He wanted them to remember this special night and the covenant or the promise he was making to them and to all people. So what do you think is in our purple egg? Let's see. I get it open. Let's see here. It's a little glass. Like the cup that Jesus gave to all his disciples on the Last Supper. Can y'all see that? It's a tiny cup. Little baby cup. See? All right. So we got our fourth egg here. Jesus went to the garden to pray. He knew what was going to happen and that he was going to die. And it made his heart very sad because he wasn't just 
God, he was part human too, so he felt emotions, right? So Jesus was willing to die for he once said, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down in John 10, 18. You see, one of the remarkable things about Jesus was that like no one before or since, he was both God and man, like I said before. He was willing to die because of his great love, but the human part of him did not want to experience great pain. But who really would want to experience pain as a human? Nobody. But he was God and man, and he wanted to die for your sins. See, he was willing to lay his life down for you. When you are afraid or sad, you should do just as Jesus did in his last hours. You could pray, right? So who has an idea what's in my orange egg? Any ideas? Let's see. We have praying hands because Jesus went to the garden to pray, right? All right. So we've had four eggs now. We're going to go get our fifth egg out. Let's see here. Got our fifth egg. Let's see, when Jesus finished praying in the garden, the men who wanted to kill him took him as their prisoner. Then they brought Jesus to Pilate, their ruler, and he had Jesus whipped. The Bible says that by his stripes we were healed, so that by the stripes that he was beaten with, by the, the whip, we're healed by those stripes. The whip used was long and hard, and I'm sure it hurt him so much. It hurt him so much that he bled. Jesus hadn't done anything wrong. He was sinless, right? The men who wanted to kill him were afraid of losing power, so they wanted Jesus out of their way. They knew that if people really believed that Jesus was the Son of God, which he was, they would follow him. So what do you think is in egg number five? Let's see. It's a little whip. See? There's the whip that whip Jesus was a lot larger and it would hurt a whole lot more. It had like rope on the end of it. Okay, so that was egg number five. Now we're going to get egg number six out. All right, so Jesus told Peter that he would deny him once, not once, not twice, how many times? Three times before the rooster crowed, right? So, what do you think is in this egg, this yellow egg? Jesus told Peter that he would deny him not once, twice, but three times before the rooster crowed. Any ideas what's in here? We have a little rooster. Ah, you won't stand up. <laughs> uh, so we have a rooster because why? I know you can't answer me in person, but you can type or you can say it out loud because the rooster crowed and Peter denied Jesus, right? Right. All right. So we're going to go on to our next egg here. We're going to go to the orange egg. Let's see here. Any ideas? After Jesus had been whipped, the soldiers took branches with thorns twisted them into the shape of a crown, and shoved it down on Jesus' head. Again, Jesus bled. He bled for you and for me. We know that because Jesus was the Son of God, he could have stopped all these men from hurting him, right? But he let them continue. Do you know why he let them continue? Because even though he hadn't done anything wrong, he had not sinned. Jesus was taking the punishment for all the wrong things that we do, that I do, and that you do. He, he's taken all the blame for everything we've done on that cross that day. And putting that crown of thorns on his head was taking the blame also. So, our orange egg, let's see what it has in it. It has a little crown of thorns. Can you see that? This is similar to the one that was on Jesus' head. But I'm sure it's just like rose bushes that have thorns on them. If you've ever touched a rose bush and it's pricked you, those are the same kind of thorns that were in Jesus' crown. All right, so now we have number eight. Let's see. The Bible tells us that Jesus was stronger than any man. The soldiers could, couldn't have killed Jesus if he had not let them. So he let them, right? This was on his own will. He let them. He could have fought off the soldiers, but why didn't he? You remember why? 
because God loves people so much he was willing to let Jesus be punished for our sins. The things we do are the ways we act that don't please God. And even though it hurt Jesus badly, he was willing to do what God the Father asked. Jesus loves us too. What do you think is in the green egg? Let's see. We have a cross made out of nails. Now these nails are a lot smaller than the ones that they used to put Jesus on the cross. But this is just an idea of how, how it could be. This is a cross made out of nails. All right, so now we have a purple egg. Let's see, the two robbers were crucified with Jesus, one on each side of him. They were on their own crosses, here, here, and then Jesus was here. When the soldiers came to check the three men on the crosses, Jesus had already died. Just to make sure though, one of the soldiers stabbed Jesus in the side with a spear. It is sad to think that Jesus died and that he died in such a cruel way. But remember that Jesus gave up his life because of his love for sinners, for you and for me, right? So what do you think is in this egg? Ah, I fell, hold on. It's a little spear, like the one they used to go into Jesus' side. Right there, right there. All right, we've got three more eggs left. in this one. I don't hear anything, do you? What do you think's in here? After Jesus died, a man named Joseph asked if he could bury him or take his body from the cross. This was a brave and loving thing for Joseph to do. Remember that the men who killed Jesus did not believe he was the son of God. They thought he was just a normal man. But Joseph did believe and he wanted Jesus to have a proper burial. Joseph knew that this might get him in trouble with the soldiers, but he was brave and asked for permission anyway. Joseph wrapped the body of Jesus in cloth and buried him in a tomb cut out of rock like a shallow cave. Joseph then went away sad because Jesus was dead and he wondered what would happen next. So, what do you think is in our blue egg? What is that? This is the white linen, like what they um, wrapped Jesus in, in the tomb. You see it? All right, so we're on to our pink egg. This one's heavy. What do you think's in here? So, the stone that was rolled in front of Jesus' tomb was much bigger than the stone that we have in our egg. So it's a stone in the egg. It was as big as a door. You might, that's pretty big, huh? And weighed as much as a car. That's a big stone, so no human could really push over the stone, right? It would have to be like an angel, right? Right. Um, after Jesus was buried, special soldiers were assigned to stand guard at the tomb, but these men were no match for God's angel. It took just one angel to roll the stone away. The guards were so afraid that they fainted. Where did the angel get his strength? Do you know? From God. Okay, so we're going to open this up. Kind of already have an idea what's in this since I already said it. But this is like the stone that was in front of the tomb. But a lot bigger and a lot heavier. See it? <clears throat> so what do you think is in our last white egg? Do you hear anything? It's really light. The angel told them, he has risen. Jesus has come back to life. Thank goodness, right? Because he's going to come back one day and he's going to take us back to heaven with him if we're saved. This is the promise that Jesus made to his disciples at their special dinner just a few days before. That he would die but come back to life to show those who believed in him that he would live forever too. Um, so since Jesus is no longer in the tomb and he went back to heaven, he will come back and get us one day, right? But in order to go to heaven, what do you have to do? Do you know? You have to ask Jesus into your heart. Who remembers the ABCs of salvation that we talked about? A is what? Admit you have sinned. What is B? Believe in Jesus. And C is confess that Jesus is Lord. 
So all you have to do is say a prayer and tell Jesus that you admit that you're a sinner and that you love him and that you believe in him and that you confess that Jesus is Lord. So that's all you have to do today is ask to ask Jesus into your heart. It's not an operation. It's not something difficult. It's a real easy prayer. And if you feel Jesus knocking at your heart, all you have to do is say that prayer. So our last egg, let's get back to our last egg here. What do you think is in here? There's nothing in the egg, right? Why? Because just like in the tomb on the third day, Jesus was not there. So the, the egg is empty. Isn't that cool? So that is my Easter story with my resurrection eggs. I miss all of you so much. I hope that you enjoyed the short lesson that I had. Um, can't wait till we're all back together again. I get to see all your sweet faces and hug you and um, I'm here for you if you need me. I know some of you are on Snapchat, some of you are on Facebook, some of you are not, and you're probably watching with your parents, but I love all of you so much, and, um, I miss you. Can't wait to see you guys soon. Talk to you soon. Bye!